is July 6th, 2021. Um, and I just want to say welcome back to live. Uh, call the order with Pledge of Allegiance. How about Mr. Hoko? Students being forced to take lunch. You know, so the school gets paid. 
but then watch them find the nearest garbage can, which is usually in this corner, and toss it. Didn't care, but snack bar was booming, and that's okay, because again, the school makes a buck, right? So kids are filling up on cleaning hot garbage and cookies. Is this acceptable? The school board's known for years about the lunches, and here we still are. We gonna hold them accountable yet? Today, here speaking for those students who reached out to me. They were afraid of backlash to come speak here today to you. And fear of being told it's not that bad, the pressure to drop it. But I'm not afraid. Please hear them. Do we have anyone else? Thomas Smith? mediation on June 15th was revealed. It was a summary of what we've witnessed seeing uncivil trustee conduct in several episodes over the last few years. There is no overwhelming evidence in history that clearly identifies the problem. This problem does not benefit the district. Accusations without evidence, petty gossip, and self-serving behavior that distracts from the problem doesn't work. Attempts to shift blame to the superintendent doesn't work either. Don't blame others for your choices. Trustees like the public are responsible for their own conduct, not somebody else. I think incivility from some trustees in the past has contributed to the problems that the district is dealing with now. It's a distraction, not a solution for the district's issues. Some problems could have been solved years ago if these trustees chose to work together in an open and respectful manner. This behavior should not be accepted by the board. If the problem is not resolved, I don't see how the board will successfully sell a bond to voters, even with clearly identified needs. I think it will fail. I'd rather see the district be absorbed by another community than watch more dysfunctional incidents substituted for public representation. And as the mediator said, the board members need to do their job and stop trying to involve themselves with the administration's responsibilities. The mediator said that again and again, board members need to do their job and stop trying to involve themselves with the administration's responsibilities. I'm sorry, that's bad. You must find a way to let go of past unhelpful behaviors that move forward. Unwillingness to do that is not an option. Shifting blame isn't either. Civility is the only responsible way to conduct the district's business. Mr. Urban said the Open Meetings Act requires boards to act with good faith and fellowship. Most trustees have done that to varying degrees, but it's a real struggle for some. The mediator's observations and conclusions clearly back this up. He identified accountability for problems and repeated solutions that were objected to or deflected by some trustees. The Open's meeting, Open Meetings Act is not a platform for playing gotcha. Its basic standard of civil behavior is clear. Those trustees who choose not to meet that standard should not be on this board. The community deserves better. It's simple, really. If you want to be taken seriously and not be laughed at, just act like an adult. I commend those trustees who are making an effort. I'd like to see a strong effort from all of them. We can disagree without being mean or ugly if we choose to. That should apply to everyone. Thanks for your attention. Superintendent. Thank you, President Holder. Uh, I just have a couple things. Just want to report out on the carnival that we had on. Um, it was a success in spite of uh, the weather. Uh, we thought we were going to get rained out, but we managed to fundraise a little over $10,000 <clears> after all the fees and uh, expenses. We still uh, managed to make uh, a little over $7,000 in fundraising. Uh, but our objective was not to make money on uh, this event. Our objective was to provide an uh, atmosphere for families to come together, 
um, and celebrate and spend time with each other um, as we're coming out of this pandemic. So we had no real incidents. Um, I just want to thank uh, the people that helped. Uh, really, their help was pretty much uh, appreciated. And then the other thing that I have, uh, President Holder, is I want to acknowledge um, some teachers who um, have received their tenure. So uh, I just want to applaud them. We will have certificates for them. Um, I, I don't mean to, can I interrupt for just one second? I, I pulled up the Facebook live video just to see, and unless you're in the microphone, there, nobody's hearing you on Facebook. Can you hear me? No. I cannot hear you. Okay, how about, how about now? Uh, let me pull the feedback up. Okay. I um, want to recognize Caitlin Snezek uh, for achieving tenure, Lisa Vanderhagen for achieving tenure, Tran Tong for achieving tenure, Catherine Hart for achieving tenure, Wild Jarbo for achieving tenure, and Margaret Kelch for achieving tenure. Um, it's a big honor um, to be able to present them that tenure certificate, and uh, that concludes my report. Next up, approval of the minutes for the regular board meeting, June 7th, 2021. Special board meetings, June 1st, 2021. June 11th, 2021. June 14th. 2021, June 15th, 2021, and June 22nd, 2021. We recommend the Board of Education approve the minutes from those addressed meetings. I need a maker and a support, please. Mr. Holcomb is the maker. Mrs. Thompson is the support. Any discussion? Beth, do you have anything to add? No, I do not. Thank you. All righty. Hearing nothing, um, we have roll, please. Crystal Beamer? Yes. Rebecca Chandless? Yes. Mark Wolfman? Yes. Cindy Holder? Yes. Deborah Odd? Deb Stepson? Yes. Beth Scott? Thank you. Next up, approval of MHSAA membership for the 2021-22 school year. Um, do we have any other information? It's just Mich uh, the Michigan High School Athletic Association annual membership renewal for the 21-22 school year. Do you need a maker and support, please? Mrs. Thompson is the maker. Support. I'll support. Ms. Beaver? Yes. Any discussion? Hearing none, can we call roll, please? Crystal Beaver? Yes. Rebecca Chandless? Yes. Mark Wilcom? Yes. Cindy Holder? Yes. Beth Scott? Yes. Gloria Thompson? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Next up, approval of the K-12 Career Readiness Team Stipend. It says the $200 stipend for each team member is compensation for after-school meetings, training in the new program, as well as implementation of our K-12 Career Readiness initiatives throughout the 2021 school year. The stipends came, are coming out of our K-12 Career Readiness budget, and to, to the funds for the stipends will then be coded to each building's K-12 account, starting with 110 and 127. It's recommended the Board of Education approve the K-12 Career Readiness team stipends as presented. Do we have a maker? I'll make it. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Trustee Chambliss. 
Mr. T uh, uh, Holcomb, Mr. Thompson's not sitting next to me, is he? And is there a discussion? Beth? Thank you. All right. Hearing none, call the roll, please. Mark Holcomb? Yes. Cindy Holder? Yes. Deborah Ott? Yes. Crystal Beaver? Yes. Rebecca Shambles? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Next up uh, is the approval of the account tops. Uh, Robert Half. Um, I don't, did Dr. Hill want to talk about this or um, Mr. Abdullah? Yes. Um, we're asking for approval to use one staff accountant, experienced staff accountant to support our accounting work. We have uh, had some turbulence and some staff leaving and we have looming a lot of deadlines right around the court corner, uh, including the audit, heavy grant deadlines. Um, if you all follow uh, the grant funding coming from the state, you know, they have given us tight timelines in which to comply and apply for those funds. So, we need some additional support and we're coming to the board to ask for one experienced accountant to help us uh, navigate as you know we try to steady steady our staffing needs and with that um, it's recommended that the board of education Approve the use of accounting support services from accountants Robert Half. I need a maker in support, please. I'll make that motion. Mrs. Thompson, is there support? All support. Trustee Beaver? Yes. Any discussion? Madam President, I do. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so this, um, this accounts Robert had, do we know how many hours we're going to be using him weekly or monthly and how long? It's going to be a regular 40-hour uh, work week. Uh, we have a we're lot of deadlines. It's going to be a regular 40-hour work week. Uh, we have uh, heavy deliverables to the audit as of uh, August the 2nd that we must meet to keep the district in compliance. Um, there are other uh, compliance items that the district must meet. You know, um, there's a lot of needs that the district has, and one of the needs is we have to remain fiscally responsible and compliant. And in order for us to do that with our uh, very um, small staff, you know, we've had some people leave. In order for us to meet those deadlines, we need to help them account temps. Just one experienced accountant. Work 40 hours a week, at least to get us into August, September, you know, before we can um, hire for that, that one position. We don't have the time, you know, to hire and train, you know, whenever someone leaves, there's a training that needs to take place, but you have your deadlines that you must meet, and so we're just caught at this time. And so we need those services to be successful. Okay, my second question is, um, we're only missing, we're missing a payroll person, correct? Lawrence is back. Yes. Lawrence is back, but um, with emphasis on back. You know, when he left, there was a lag. You know, there was work that was not done. So now we have to catch up. And we also need not a payroll because Lawrence is doing payroll. We need the additional accounting position. So, you know, there's a lag when people leave. You know, there's things that are not done. We got to catch up. And we have a lot of moving deadlines. And to be fiscally responsible, this is the reason why I'm coming to the board 
uh, for support in this area so that we can be successful. Thank you. Anybody else? Hearing none. Um, we'll call up, please. We'll start with Beth Scott. Yes. Gloria Thompson. Yes. Crystal Beaver. Yes. Rebecca Chambliss. Yes. Mark Holcomb. Yes. Cindy Holder. Yes. Motion passes. Next is the approval of the resolution of the preliminary qualification of bonds. It is recommended the Board of Education resolve to apply for preliminary qualification of bonds by the state treasurer for the purpose of financing the school construction description in this application. That said application is presented to the state treasurer for action prior to the official election of the Board of Education calling the election on a set bond issue. Resolved that this Board of Education will present a final qualification application to the State Treasurer for qualification of their bonds after this bond issue has been approved by the electors of said district. Read this application and approve all statements and representations contained herein as true to the best knowledge and belief of the board authorization or authorized the secretary of the board of education to sign this preliminary application and submit same to the state treasurer for sorry review and approval it is recommended the board of education approve the resolution for the preliminary qualification of bonds. Do we have a maker and support? Mr. Holcomb is the maker. Do we have support? Chair, I'll support. Okay, Trustee Chambliss. And any discussion? Beth, do you have any questions? No, thank you. All right. Hearing none, can we have a roll call vote, please? Rebecca Chambliss? Yes. Crystal Beaver? Yes. Gloria Thompson? Yes. Beth Scott? Yes. Cindy Holder? Yes. Mark Holcomb? Yes. Motion passes. We not. Personnel report, human resources, Mr. James. Chambliss. 
Any questions? I only have one. We're saying that um, Lawrence is coming back. Do we have to rehire him? Um, How does that work? Since the board did um, vote on his commission, he's rescinded. So. So Beth, did you hear that? Okay, just so that you heard the answer, because it was never brought to us his his resignation, so we don't have to retire him. Just so everybody. He just rescinded his uh, resignation. Okay, and with that, can we have um, we'll call vote, please. Mark Polka? Yes. Cindy Holder? Yes. Beth Scott? No. Gloria Thompson? Yes. Crystal Weaver? Yes. Rebecca Chambliss? Yes. Motion passes. 6 1. Okay. Five, oh, 5 1. Sorry, you are right. I, I was already corrected. You didn't receive the Mr. Abdullah Han was he's given me the notice. <laughs> Uh, okay, and with that, Mr. Jamie is here for the set site list update. There's some extra copies in the public. Once you grab a copy, it's right up here. I cannot hear. He said yeah. they have the extra copies that are available for the public that's here. It's directional, mm -hmm. so you have to speak for um, this report is also on the web page. It's under the administrative tab under business and operations, so we can be seen there as well. Uh, what I'll do is let's go through this kind of quickly since we already went through it in a previous meeting. If you have any questions along the way, just let me know. Start with page one here. Um, this is the administration office. Um, this has been completed. First page here, the exposed wiring has been prepared. Um, some storage on the floor in the basement. We're pricing out shelving units for that. Weather inspection. Inspections have been completed. We're just waiting on the certificate to be mailed to us. Um, we noted a backup sump pump. Uh, there is actually a backup sump pump already installed there. Um, the dam for the basement doesn't close. This is being looked into. Um, we're having a quote from uh, her, her side. He does. There's also a leaking pipe uh, in our basement the admin office. We're getting a quote from the trade boiler at her side to look at that. Rusted pipe. Okay. pipe. Uh, we're getting quotes on that as well. Exposed wiring um, is going to be addressed by the district staff. Fire extinguishers is being addressed this week by Conti, who's doing our inspection. Uh, the data feed wiring against metal, this is being addressed by district staff. Electrical cords and hoses, this has been addressed. Slip and fall hazards, we're looking to do a, a small minor repair to that, but um, this is something we hope to address with the bond if it does pass. Uh, electrical wiring outside. These are old cable wires that need to be removed and secured. Um, working on that. Light pole damage. Uh, this will also be addressed by the district staff. It's a huge cement pillar, so we're trying to figure out how to um, get that out of there. Uh, electrical inspections. I'm going to talk to set so I can see they're recommended for that. Employee training is completed through safe schools every year. Extended break facility inspection, uh, sets and provided us with a checklist. This has been distributed to all of our custodians. We have to do have a facility use agreement, so that's complete. Freeze loss prevention program, this is implemented through a set site checklist as well. Um, refrigeration unit, uh, we're looking into this to provide some quotes for that. Roofing inspections are scheduled. The roofing maintenance, uh, depending on what is needed, will um, 
inputs for that once, the, once it's provided to us. Surge protection, I have to get a quote for that as well. A lot of these are kind of expensive, so I'll um, just take some time to get some quotes for these. Other surge protection, we have to get a quote on that one. Routine electrical inspections is something I'll look at with when we schedule some infrared testing that said said recommends. Uh, backup generator is extremely pricey, that's something we're looking to on Monday, hopefully. Okay, this is BCC. Uh, the crack concrete, um, we're hoping to address this with bond funding. Boiler inspections, these are completed. Um, the pump not guarded, these two pumps are not adequately guarded. This is something that the boiler is working on both burning on right now. Electrical panels, they're blocked, this has been resolved. Snow blower stored inside, this has been resolved. Water and oil leakage, this was completed by a trade boiler. Um, Sets I recommended flammable liquid storage cabinets. Uh, we're looking at pricing the cabinets, but in the meantime, all the flammable liquids have been stored elsewhere. Uh, this electrical door, we're working on a parts list to get this working again. Uh, remove combustibles from the stove, this is completed. Slip trip and fall hazard. This was also completed. Univent meter. This was completed. And exit signs were also all test, tested in the ICC. This is MES. Boiler inspection was completed. Storage on the transformer. This was completed. Spray foot pipe leaking, this is going to be inspected by a Conti this week. Uh, they recommended a backup pump. We have purchased the pump, we just need to uh, get the other materials needed to install it. Motor and pump running loud. We addressed this on 618. Remove the computer equipment from the boiler room. Um, the door not sealed, this was completed. Black automatic sprinkler system, this was also completed. That's where we blocked electrical panels. Snow blower inside, this was also removed. Uh, another black electrical panel, this was dissolved. Kitchen extinguishing system, this is completed this week by Conti when they do the district live test. Uh, same thing with the sprinkler head clearance below, this was mentioned to the teacher as well. So. I know they're working on figuring that out. Fire doors block. There's an appointment scheduled with um, one door to have this fixed. Uh, there's an issue with the one fire door. Exit signs. These are all fixed. The screen the screen lights. This is brought to the teacher's attention and was removed. Preaching security. This is also brought to the teacher's attention. The cement sill is damaged, um, this was addressed. Door sill damage is also addressed. Car on the sidewalk, um, the building administrator addressed it with the building staff. Back of cameras in the rear of the building, uh, the camera is being added in this location. That's how you go. Wilkinson, um, slip trip and fall hazard in the parking lot. This is being addressed. Um, we're going to use the bond to fix this, I'm sorry. Um, there's also some cracking around the brick. This is something I have to try to reach out to a company and get some quotes on. The block egresses were addressed. As with the block electrical panels and the block boiler room door. This mess is covered, it's damaged. It says here, I'm going to skip a little point with no environmental to come out to see if it needs to be remediated. I'm just going to set up an appointment with me this week to do that. Snow blower storage inside has been completed. Weather inspection has been completed. We're waiting on the certificate. Um, the padlocks have been removed from these doors. 
exposed wiring is also included as well. Production box covers, what it looks like it was. Uh, same thing with the other exposed wiring on page six. And that picture is missing bulbs. This was addressed. The kitchen extinguishing system, this will be serviced by uh, Conti this week. Same with the uh, hydrostatic testing. The slip trip and fall hazard was addressed in the kitchen. Um, the fishing boards outside of the sheds will be completed by the school staff. Same with the slip trip and fall, we're going to try to address as best we can with some skin coating and if not, we'll have to fix it completely with some bond funding. Uh, repair the roof, this is what we discussed before. The one section of the roof is past its life expectancy here. Um, you really can't fix this leak damage until the roof is repaired. The rear doors have no security. This has to be um, just the tight way. You can add some contacts on the doors to uh, wire into the alarm system. Um, this is smoking on school grounds. The rest of the staff. This is the second part of the roof that's in here. This door was open, there was kitchen security, so that was addressed with the kitchen staff. The block egresses were addressed in the gym. They were addressed with the teacher as well as the block uh, the electrical cords and hoses. The exposed wiring um, plate is being purchased to cover this exposed uh, wiring in the wall here. Emergency lights and exit signs, these were all looked at and tested. Computers in the gym, this was addressed with the um, gym teacher as well. Missing cover on the dishwasher, this has been replaced. Um, the roof ceiling tile in the kitchen has also been replaced. The black egress on the stage has been addressed. Lights on the stage, close to the curtains, this is not addressed. Um, asbestos tiles, these are listed on our asbestos plan. And this is the pipe on the next page. Electrical cords and hoses, this is not addressed. These ceiling tiles on the next page have been uh, replaced since then. Event discoloration, the filter has been changed. The block electrical panels have been addressed. And uh, the Nova sends the staff by turning off computers and labs. Uh, this mentions an infrared inspection again. This is something we need to be in touch with set site about. For the robotics program, um, they provide us with inventory of this. This has not been done yet. Exposed wiring, this is on our to do list here. The pipe extensions, we're going to get some quotes from landscape vendors to see what it would cost to install a trench drain. If it's super expensive, it's something that we might just want to remove to um, prevent um, any fall hazards just for now. Um, these poles around this transformer are up from our bed. I need to call them to you and see if this is something you can place, and if not, I have to try to find out who is responsible for that. Um, repair fence is scheduled for this week. Electrical plug outside will be fixed by school staff. Uh, this is the light pole is tethered to a tree. Um, once Stody and I looked at it, it's actually not tethered to a tree. The line is coming from the DT power poles to this pole. So it's Alright, this is uh, Madison High School. The pool area, the motor has been replaced. Uh, I still have like inspected, um, but it's not been done as of yet. Region security is not been addressed. Um, group leaks, obviously, the you know, repairs are ongoing. Uh, the tiles are replaced. We're doing what we can to uh, keep up with the repairs. Thank you.
fine. Kitchen extinguisher system is being inspected this week. Black egresses have been addressed. Uh, the machine guarding table saw, the saw is not in use, but we used to remove the blade in the UFC state. And the whiteboards have been installed. I know that there used to be a state law that any time you even turn a screw on the boilers, the state inspector had to come out. Is that still a state law? Uh, it's for insurance purposes mostly. Um, I've I never heard that. I've never heard that. I've never heard that. Do we intend to have someone come out when everything is done? And have them inspected by the state? Yeah, that's, that's currently going on right now. They're coming out. They did the, they did the um, CSD1 inspections. I was waiting on the certification and uh, results from that. Okay. Anybody else have a question? Scott, did you have a question? Yes, I do. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wondered if, uh, if Jamie would send the Board of Education a copy of that because I don't have that. We'll send you one and we get posted on, have we posted online? We post it online and he'll send you a copy um, okay. first thing tomorrow morning. Thank you. Okay. I know this was a lot of work, thank you. Uh, and uh, at least we know from this point on the list will be shorter and shorter. Yeah, exactly. I just want to thank the custodian yes. staff as well for working so hard. on, we have the check register approval. Expenditures for the month of June 2021. Accounts payable, $530,643.35. Payroll, $369,126.52. Wire transfers, $458,499.13. Total out, one million three hundred fifty-eight two hundred sixty-nine dollars even. It's recommended the Board of Education approve the monthly expenditures as presented. Do we have a maker and support? Mr. Holcomb makes the motion. Do we have support? I'll support Madam President. Thank you. Trustee Scott. Any discussion? Chair, I have a question. Trustee Chambliss, go ahead. If a trustee misses a meeting, do we still get paid or no? Because we have been in this check register, we have paid trustees in one another meeting. It was an oversight, I believe you're talking about this. Um, so, I, I did she talk to Yeah, she did bring it to somebody's attention. So the answer is usually no. That's what I thought. I was just clarifying. No. And I just have one thing. Go ahead, Ms. Thompson. I did go over the invoices again, and we had another nine pages of long-distance phone calls again. But I have assurances from Mr. Abdulahab that that's being corrected this time. Correct, Mr. Abdulahab? Yeah, we're, we're adding. We're adding the four to six digit pin. It'll be done by, by the time school starts. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, call roll, please. Gloria Thompson? Yes. Beth Scott? Yes. Cindy Holder? Yes. Mark Holcomb? Yes. Rebecca Chambliss? Yes. Crystal Beaver? Yes. Motion passes.
That's, we have some information that I'm sure, oh, this one's, yes, we have it, thank you, that I'm sure you'll be getting. Good evening, Board of Education members and community. Yes, so far. Okay. Uh, what is being passed out? Basically, I wanted to update the board in this community on our major grant funding. Um, I have provided um, uh, the names of our major grants. Uh, our allocation amount when the grant ends, and any notes uh, regarding the grants. Starting with the GEARS grant, uh, the district was awarded $102,295, and the grant ends 9-30-2021, and we have applied for it, and I, put, I have provided this for what we uh, spent the GEARS grant on. Uh, along with ESSA 1, um, the Madison District Public Schools was awarded $322,372. Um, and then the board has what we applied for this grant funding to, you know, what we're using the grant funding for. Um, all educational purposes, of course. Uh, to include supplies, um, little professional development uh, because we are in a COVID environment, you know, uh, supplies needed for us to comply with COVID, you know, cleaning supplies, masks, and things of that nature. As for two, the only thing that um, MDE has allowed districts to apply for thus far is for our district, $537,330. So we apply for that funding. Uh, it's going to support our summer school program. It's just starting along with 23B funding. But um, 23B funding, like the rest of ESSER 2 and ESSER 3, uh, it was caught up in legislation. Um, our legislators approved um, a large state aid bill to go to school districts, and you all heard about that. And what they're going to do, they're going to tell us what we can actually apply for the rest of that funding. Um, they're going to send us an email. We're going to have a short window this month to apply for the funding. So, you know, we're internally getting ready, even though, you know, we have, have some shifts here and there, but we're getting ready and we will be able to apply for the funding so that the district doesn't lose anything. Because we're going to have a short window because um, the state, you know, they had to vote on all this COVID money. And if you all have been following it, you know, it has passed, it was pending, but the governor, we don't know what she will support or not support, but I know she's for education, so stay tuned for that. In terms of our Title I, Title II, Title III, and Title IV funding, that has already been applied for. The end date on that is September 30th, 2021. Um, we have spent most of it. We have spent most of this funding, and we have until uh, September the 30th to complete our spending. And then a final report, of course, is due by the end of October. And that's when we'll throw down the final final funding, and you know, we don't want to lose anything. Title II, Title III, and Title IV rolls over if you don't spend it all. Title I, you only get 15% carryover, and we are aware of that, and we don't want to lose a penny. In terms of our Title I, Title II, Title III, and Title IV for the current year, normally this application is put in July 1st of any given year, but you know, uh, Michigan, the Michigan Department of Education, they decided to migrate to what is called a Nexus system. They weren't ready for us, so they're going to send us an email when they're ready for us to apply for this funding. 
So this is different. They've never done this before, but they're changing databases in terms of the database that we use to apply for the funding. But I have provided this report, you know, what we have uh, applied for uh, to be transparent. I do have some additional copies if any of the community members want to see what we can apply for. You know, I do have them up there for you. And um, that total is 5.5 million. You see the total at the bottom. And that's that. The money goes to support the classroom teachers and um, just the needs of the district. And that's my presentation. Thank you for your time and attention. Yes. Okay. K2. There has been a lot of questions about the K-2 funding, and so I did a reconciliation of the K-2 funds. Uh, in short, uh, this funding uh, started back in 2018, and we received about $36,959,000 worth of deposits. And initially, we had $49,303 in expenses overdrawing that account by $12,344.69. So when I started the district, you know, we can't have uh, the activity funding overdrawn. That means that money was taken that um, that account wasn't due, or that, you know, you're not supposed to overspend any funding because that money has to come from somewhere. So to overdraw that account by $12,344, it, it needed to be corrected. What happened, in short, was a check was cut against this fund in the amount of $41,958.41. So when I came in, I was able to avoid the check because I can't leave that account negative. <clears throat> so when I avoided that $41,000 check, it left the expenses against this account in the amount of $7,345.57. And so the new K-2 balance is $29,613.72. And I have provided this board with the detail and the accounting of this money. And this fund, there has been no activity against this account or on this fund. It's just sitting there. So once again, the balance is $29,613.72, and there was a prior period adjustment of $12,344. You know, that was the, the net result of that check being voided. As we can't leave that account negative, it means that, you know, money was taken and it wasn't due. So that's my presentation on that. K2 funding. Thank you. We are not doing anything with that number. No, in, in January of 2019, the board took action to freeze that account, uh, and so nothing's been touched since. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Beth, go ahead. Can Adelina email that to you uh, what was given and also the breakdown on the K2 funding? Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. Now that the money is just sitting there and there's no activity on it, is it possible to reroute that money? We have underclassmen that currently haven't been able to fundraise for special events when they become seniors. We have classes that could benefit, like doing special things for the seniors. Would it be possible to reroute this money or does it just sit in limbo forever? See, the way that the student activity fund works, whatever that fund was designed to do, whatever that, the reason for that, the reason why the fund was created, you know, you have to stick with that unless that um, 
that board that um, got together to initiate that student activity fund, you know, makes the change to do what you're saying. So it would have to be that committee. You know, student activity funds, um, that's a special fund, and, and you know, we uh, can't change the identification of that fund. Do we have any plans to address the money so that it is allocated in a way that it can be used for the students? I'll speak to that. I feel more comfortable waiting to see um, I had received a lot of inquiries regarding that account, so I would recommend the board to wait and see, and then the board could take action to freeze. So the, the board has taken action to freeze that spending right now. No activity at, at all. And that's what I would recommend. We continue until those inquiries are resolved, and then we can proceed after those inquiries. Okay, thank you. No other questions, we're gonna move on. Uh, GRC report, please. That would be myself, Madam President, and Scott. Um, so I forwarded what we had received, um, and also on July 1st, I sent an email to Mr. Gulaha that I was resigning from that committee. Um, I can't remember if it was Rebecca or Crystal, that's my backup if they want to pick it up, but I have resigned. Um, but we'll continue to send anything that I get until someone actually takes over that position. Okay. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. And with that, before we proceed, um, who was the alternate? I believe it's me. And would you like to then sit on that as our spokesperson? Yes, ma'am. I go to the All right. Um, Beth, I don't know if you heard, but Tristy Chambliss is going to Thank you. be our representative. Okay, next up, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee Report. That would be me and then Tristy. Okay, so is that work? It's directional, so you got to just hold it. Okay, um, they just recently had the um, Juneteenth at the Civic Center, and I haven't heard back on that yet because they have another meeting scheduled for this month. And while we're here, we might as well do Parks and Rec. We have a meeting set up for next week, and I'll be back with everybody on that. Thank you. Chair? Um, yes, the trustee chambers. The DEI committee is actually Crystal and I. Um, I think, I think it's a different committee that Wisconsin goes yeah. to. And I actually think, I know there was some confusion as to whether she made it to her report here or not, but but go ahead. Okay. I, I know it's confusing. It's okay. More information is better. Um, so the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee has been really trying since December, January to get a 21-day challenge out. It's something that different boards would receive information every single day, and it would be an activity that takes 15 to 20 minutes of your day, and it makes you stop and see things in a different way. It makes you notice things that you might not have otherwise noticed. And they did that with just the delegates for the DEI committees, and we came back after 21 days, and it was a phenomenal experience that at first I thought was silly, but then within like two, three days was amazing. So they tried to push out to entire boards, and they wanted our entire board to do it. But they felt with everything going on with COVID and everything going on just in the world right now, that it would be too much for the um, for, for board to take it on. So they have postponed it till September, but they are starting a seven-day challenge where it's going to ask us questions that we need to contact staff members in the building and see how they see things, how they feel to kind of bring awareness to situations we might not otherwise know. So I can forward those daily emails if you guys want to see them. They're really interesting. It might be how you experience something at the grocery store, things that you might not notice. It's a really neat experience, but I will report more on it when we finish it. Session pursuant to section 8C for strategy and negotiation sessions 
connected with the negotiation of a collective bargaining agreement if either negotiating party requests a close hearing. It's recommended that the Board of Education move to closed session. So we need a maker and support. And we have support. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Thompson was support that if you didn't hear that. Yes. Any discussion? Chair, I <laughs> Trustee Weaver, go ahead. Do we need to list the name of the party we're going to session for? We just have to read that verbiage, but it's for collective bargaining agreement. It's teachers, it's no secret, but it's for the teachers bargaining agreement and the custodial cafeteria. But Absolutely. legally, we just have to read it just, just as that. Seeing no more questions, call the roll, please. Rebecca Shamless? Yes. Crystal Beaver? Yes. Mark Holcomb? Yes. Cindy Boulder? Yes. Gloria Thompson? Yes. Beth Scott? Yes. Motion passes. So with that, we will recess to close session.
Next up, Trustee Chambers. Caitlin Benson, Ben Harwood, Leslie Rennie Higabon, Josetta Dobzik, Erica Lee, Stephen Emery, Stephanie Kern, Jerry Beakley, Scotty Brash, Sarah Moeller, Sarah Cummings, Ms. Terry, Ms. Hinkle, and Ms. Kimbrough. Those are just some of the staff members that have left in the last six months of the school year. Sorry. We have lost admins, teachers, coaches, bus drivers, office staff, maintenance, and more. Our students have lost adults they trust, stability, friendships, and more. Many of our students have loving homes, but not all do. As adults, we understand people move on. Our students don't, though. Sometimes the teacher is the only friendly face a child sees in their day. Sometimes that janitor is the only friend. Sometimes they are the ones to notice changes in our kids. Their impact is so much deeper than just filling a subject or just holding a title. I have requested a discussion on staff morale and ways to improve staff life. I am requesting that we focus on things that are not anything to do with contract, but that we have an open communication with our staff to try to see what we can do to make them feel like family. Money is only half of why they're here. We, the other battle is to make them feel like they're cared about or appreciated. Because I can tell you that many of the names I just read left our students in tears, left parents in tears, left their coworkers in tears. Second, I just want to say the carnival was amazing. It was awesome. It was so great to be out again. I know it was about the money, but it was nice that we could raise, we could raise money too. Um, and then the last thing is summer school being underway and the innovation lab at Ferndale. Those are great things. I'm hearing a lot of great responses from the kids. I know my son goes to the innovation lab in Ferndale, and his experience there was just amazing. So I do appreciate all these new resources and outlets we're trying to do for the kids and I hope that going forward into the 2021-2022 school year we do even more because those are the things these families will take away and the memories the kids will hold forever. Thank you. Trustee Beaver. Um, I just wanted to say that the Eagle family had another loss. Um, my heart and prayers go out to all the players, coaches, and the families that were impacted. Um, I want to congratulate all the teachers on receiving their tenure. I'm so thankful for everything that you guys do for our students. Everyone mentioned this evening has influenced my children, and MDPS is incredibly lucky to have you. I want to congratulate Mr. John Odo. He did his student teaching with us, and the kids loved him. There were a lot of sad tears when he left, so I want to officially welcome him back to the Madison family. Um, like Ms. Jumbo said, the carnival was an absolute boss. I enjoyed seeing so many smiling faces and kids hanging out with their friends. It was a breath of fresh air. Thank you to Mr. Kulaha, Mr. Thiel, John, Ricky, and Gary, and everyone else who helped to make that weekend happen. Uh, Mr. Thiel, I wanted to thank you for your presentation tonight. I know it's extra work, but as a mom, I appreciate being kept in the loop with things that are being fixed, and I'm sure others do as well. Uh, Dr. Hill, I wanted to thank you for your presentation as well. Hopefully, it helps the community so I guess I would say I would echo everything said. Um, teachers getting tenure used to be just you needed to show up. Now they're rated and everything. So it's not, it is a thing. It's not just, you know, a date that they hit. So it is a big deal. Congratulations to them. Um, and uh, the only other thing that I, I know is a concern for all of us sitting up here is, yes, we will be addressing the who everyone's concerned. It is um, noted and it's being worked on. So those things haven't gone unaddressed. And with that, I'm going to say good night. I uh, need a motion to adjourn and be a second. <laughs> How about if you have the support back? Mr. Holcomb's going to be the maker, and uh, Tristy Scott is going to be the supporter. And any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mark Holcomb? Yes. Rebecca Shambles? Yes. Crystal Beaver? Yes. Gloria Thompson? Yes. Beth Scott? Sydney Holder.
Yes. Motion passes. And because I have one, I don't really get it. Good night. All right, guys. Thank you.